This year's Superstars just marks a new chapter in Australia's showcast story. I've been lucky enough for the last 47 years to be involved in that story and I've seen all of them come and go. Rex Webster's FJ, Les Laurie's Hot Rod, Mick Fabar's Zero, X-Boss that went to the US. All these cars were groundbreaking in their own right. Tailspin's another one that I was involved in, which was the first clean sweep. And what you're looking at now is the six Super Six from this year. And we're gonna run through all of those cars now that qualified for superstars and made up which was a very spectacular haul full of cars. So you'll see there, we're gonna actually show you what trophies, what cars won what trophies at the event and also showcase all of the cars that qualified and came along to put on a, a really good show. So we're looking at Forged and of course this has been all over the place and, and it's the second clean sweep now. So they've won every gold medal in every category and also Super 6 and of course Grandmaster. And I think as you'll see just looking in the photos, this car really is um, a work of art. There's been a lot of people over many, many years, uh, I believe 12 years. It started at um, with Le Breeze and he put a few years into it and then it was put on hold and then it went up to Pat's Restos and Pat and his crew and a whole lot of talented people have been involved um, in the design, creation and obviously bringing it all together for the owner to actually present what you're seeing in front of you now. And I mean, I'm one of those people that can truly understand the amount of effort and work and I looked through the book that they had on the stand and I can tell you there's more under the skin that you can't see and I'm hopefully someone will bring that to us um, down the track because there's just so much innovation, design, all of those trendy words we use in the show car scene in this car and they've massaged it within an inch of its life and because of that this is the car that won all the gold medals and um, I think deservedly so and I just as I open with it's not the first car to have done that and I'm sure it won't be the last car to have done that so I mean each Almost each decade, um, we get another really standout car. And as I mentioned earlier, we've had plenty in the past. And I think each time that happens, the bar does get lifted maybe a little bit higher, but we're at a point now where it's very difficult um, to do more. Um, but I think it's just about having a, a design in your mind and a concept to be able to take that all the way through over a very long period of time, you know, stay the course, and, and come up with a result. So I thought this year, and I spoke to quite a few people at the event, just how strong the show car scene is at the moment. And within the hall and the 20 odd cars we've got to show you on this video, just shows the depth and the variation in the cars, you know, whether it's the style of car, hot rod, custom, or a late model. Um, and we've got the first Commodore in the Super 6 this year. So it's very healthy and very strong, and it's good to see. That little bit of footage you're just looking at there now is because the roof and the, the, that pillar where it comes around into the top cow panel and the fender and the sill are all one piece. So the car's all welded up and fabricated a bit like um, an LJ Tirana, basically. So it's all one piece. And I mean, this car does take um, a massive amount of brain power to absorb what they've done in the time we had to be able to look at this car. So the fit and finish was exceptional. Um, the grill you're looking at there now is, is all billet aluminium. The taillights are billet aluminium as well. It's running a Boss 9 um, with a six speed behind it. And then it's got a fabricated front and rear suspension and on the airbags and um, nothing less to chance. It's got a really nice little front spoiler on it with some um, trendy edges. Very difficult to try and get it all onto, um, onto film. And then as you can see their gold, of course, in impact and display, um, a very substantial stand. Um, it would probably take its own trailer to get it all back to Mackay where the car comes from. So that's our Grandmaster. And we move now on to a very nice hot rod out of Deluxe Hot Rods. 
Um, this vehicle was at the event last year and I think they're probably one of those unlucky cars where, you know, this was completed in the, in the COVID period, which meant it missed, there was a couple of events that missed. And I always say to people when, if I'm working on a car for someone, the success of that vehicle is really gonna be reliant on who turns up on the day. And in this particular case, this car would have clearly been the winner if there wasn't for a new car that turns up that no one's heard of and seen. And it's a stunning, well-finished car. Um, picked up quite a few medals and was a, a clear um, runner-up at this year. And I think probably in a similar position last year. The boys from Deluxe had um, four vehicles on display at the event and have been putting out quality cars for many years. Now it's interesting at this particular show, um, there were seven cars that shared the 21 medals and one of the cars in the Super 6, the Commodore, um, actually didn't receive any medals but obviously did very well in every category. Now this is the next car I believe in line based on the medals and, and I say that because um, the medals that they won carry more points than the medals that Boss XC won so I think in an overall point situation this car would have been in third place and I didn't get a good enough look at it at Summonats because there's a lot of things I've seen on this car that I didn't see at Summonats and some of the things we're looking at now is that you know side exit and exhaust but all of the front um, subframes been all remade in, in tubing and is very well done and well mounted. Um, the engine bay is very slick and clean and a lot of fabrication. It's one of those cars that's difficult to film. It's quite um, dark in all its colours so it, it's hard to get it. It doesn't sort of pop like some of the others but there's so much work in that and you can see their silver for engine and components. Very tastefully done. And where we started in the boot there, there's a lot of things happening in there that I didn't notice at Summonats. Now I do all this filming, I try and do it when there's not a lot of people around and the lighting's good, but unfortunately sometimes the cars are, are closed up on me, so in this case the doors were closed and I'm not going to go in and open them, so I've only got a little bit of the trim. So Boss XC, obviously people that know me are aware that this was built at Astor Design at, at, in my workshop at my home. Um, Peter Lewis is the owner and um, Peter and I have worked for three and a half years to, to bring this to this situation. And this car was built um, primarily as a, a car to be driven and I think it reflects that. But at the same token, Peter there's very little interest in the show scene. It was me that said, if you want me to build you a car, it's got to at least go to one show, maybe two. And that's been done now, so Summonats and Motorex. And to me, that's evident in this car where, you know, the engine's straight out of a box, the differs straight out of a box, all the front um, braking on the car is all um, brand new, but not detailed to the point where we've gone and ground things up. You know, as functional a boot as we can make as possible, where hopefully the SQ will fit in the, the suitcases if he chooses to t take it that far. And then the interior and it evolved where it was going to be an XC interior and then Peter made the decision that we'd go down as we have with the, the FG and all the electronics. And I like to think that it's a car now that you can hop in and drive and have the comfort of a late model car um, because the whole seating position is FG so all the ergonomics are, are that way and Simon and his brother Nick along with us have spent a lot of time fabricating parts to make it fit like it does and appear as it does to be pretty much stock FG with a little bit of a flair and a little bit of difference and all of those things within there that you would expect in an FG will all function. So it's a little bit different to most of the other show car show cars because we've kept all of the 
The grill and the radiator and all very standard looking because um, functionality was very high on the, um, the agenda with this car. So now for the HAU. Now, this ute's got a fair bit of history. It's, I think this is the third rebuild. So um, Ditch Jones was the original builder, um, built by Drago um, at his workshop. And then it's been through a couple of colors and a couple of phases. And I think the new look, when I heard it was gonna be white, I wasn't sure about that, but I think it's, it's come out with a stunning appearance and um, was actually there when we were packing up on Sunday night, just talking with the owners about, um, you know, as a husband and wife team on their own, packing it up, taking it home, and very heavily personally involved in it. And um, yeah, he's a painter as well himself. And then the trim in that um, was done by Simon as well. Quite innovative with the levitating seats and all. And this is a car that um, received some medals and obviously made it into the six and a very worthy winner. Quite different, I talk about show cars, this is a good example where the, the car doesn't have any side glass. So, you know, as a functional car, not necessarily high up on the list, but was built as a show car and has done that very well all its life. So Pro GM, I don't know a, a, a lot about this car and everyone knows I'm a Ford guy so I haven't gone out of my way to find out a lot about the car but this car is, I seen it at the, um, the Melbourne um, show cars and was presented as well as it is here now and I think you've got to look at the, the quality of the stand and the way it's displayed and the, the detail and the cleanliness of the car and I was reading somewhere that um, it's about to go through the engineering process and it is built to be driven and I think it reflects that in the styling and the way it is and everything's under the bonnet and it's just one of those cars and if people say you know how did it get in the six without winning any medals this car's probably run fourth or fifth in every category um, and achieved enough points to bring it into the six but not necessarily enough to, to get a medal so a very worthy um, winner to go into the Super 6 and as I said earlier the first Commodore to do so so that'll be a little tick in their box and um, they're very happy about the result they've achieved with that beautiful blue car. So we're going to go through now some of the other medal winners. Um, so Mike's 54. This is just a really standout example of that you know mid 50s Super cool look, um, it's got the pearl steering wheel, it's got the big billet wheels, beautiful paint. Picked up a, uh, a metal in paint, which will come up in a minute so I can tell you exactly what that is. But it's got a nice look, a nice stance, good colour combos, there you go, silver in paint behind the XY. And I think a cool touch is in the boot where it's got um, the matching esky and all strapped in to go with it. I could see Elvis driving that. Just all flow so nice. I'm a, a firm believer of three colours and I think the blue and the white and a bit of red just um, sits so nice, there's that esky, how cool is that? Okay, so the Tirana, this is a Canberra car, and as I said, sometimes people shut the cars up, and this is a good example of that, but I 
the advantage of this, I've actually shot this a few times. So you can see there in the left corner the bronze paint. So um, third place in paint was painted by Exclusive Customs up in um, Brisbane. Um, and I've worked with those guys and a, a lovely family that do really good work and um, you know, well achieved for a trophy. If you're towing for work or play, make sure your vehicle's up to the task. Your gross vehicle mass can be upgraded to keep everything legal and above board. Find your nearest stockist at lovellsauto.com.au and talk to the professionals about getting your vehicle right for the job. So don't forget about Lovells, our friends that keep us on the road and doing all the shows. Now this car I believe qualified at um, Showcars Melbourne. Um, massive car, such a long, when we're doing the video, Louise said to me, you want a big shed to put that one in? I don't think that'd fit in a six metre garage. Beautiful paint and chrome. Now you see the blue hot rod we just scrolled past and I must apologise because that's the one car I missed out of this whole haul because I've come around and as Dale said last night, I zigged instead of zagged and I've, I've missed it. I really apologise for that. So this car is um, out of Northern Western Australia and I believe they travelled like four and a half thousand kilometres to get to the event and obviously had to bring all the stand and the car and everything down and I think it's um, a worthy mention of all that effort to get the car to the event because it is a chore. I've done that for many, many years and a very classic, beautiful car. A little bit hard for me to get in and film some of it with the size of the stand. So there's quite a good um, mix of hot rods this year. quite a lot of blue cars. So this is about seven o'clock on the Friday night. So there's a few people just finishing up what they're doing with their setup, including my crew, which I could see in the background earlier. And people need to appreciate the amount of time it takes all of these guys to, and girls to get the car in and then get all the display in and the mirrors and the stands and lights and then set it all up and, and make it happen. So a 32 coupe with a 454 Chev and a four speed Lenko, so that'll be a weapon. This is quite unique, this car, a very unusual colour combo for a starter. And then you'll see when we get round to the engine bay, they've done something quite novel there as well. So there's cars from every state and um, a lot of people very well travelled to be able to get to the event and be able to set the car up and um, put on a display for um, all the people coming in. So you see here what I mean by the engine. This little Tirana, I believe, qualified at um, in Adelaide. I'm trying to think of the name of the event there, and it'll come to my mind in a minute. But um, very striking car in the silver. And then you'll see I've got to turn the light on. It's got that very black engine components. And I'm making some serious horsepower by looking at all those turbos. Beautiful paint. Nice 
nice classy maroon interior. Now as you, we walk up to this 67 Mustang, just check out the way the paintwork's done. So it's got you know, what we'd class as ghost frames, um, well, flames how ghost stripes, not flames. But, you know, from afar, it just looks like a black Mustang. And as you get closer, it's got those subtle details that really stand out. And you'll see that the ceiling in this um, hall has got lots of different lighting this gives a really different effect on the cars with all those dots. I had trouble filming this one on the interior. It's black on black, but it's also got like a grain um, on the inserts on the leather seats. It really did very look very effective in real life. Quite a unique air filter set up on it as well. Very nice, 32. I always say the hot rodders aren't frightening the colour. There's a good example of that, with that bright orange and then they've brought that trim colour outside of the car and into the engine bay and the undercarriage. Very nice cream trim. So I mean, you can see the depth of field when you look at all of these cars and how nice they are. And to imagine there's 21 medals and they, the medals all end up with only seven cars and it just goes to show um, how tough the competition is firstly, but secondly, how many people have put in such a, a massive effort to get these cars completed. Love the way that trim's lit up like that. That looks really good. the side indicator on the cow panel there. You can tell the ones that are fully engineered for rego. It's got the little, little covers on the wheels. A nice Chevy. You can tell just the amount of effort in that boot to make all those panels and then trim it all in leather. And of course, every car's got a story. I was just reading this board, this board there, how it all began, you know, and everyone gets a car and has a dream and a goal and whether it's done at home or in a workshop there's so much planning to be able to bring these cars together it's a nice looking engine bay to take that dream and in a lot of cases it can be you know anything up to 20 years for someone to, to bring one of these cars from nothing all the way to finished and I was talking to one of um, Adam and Kylie's friends that's been doing an FC for 28 years and he's currently got it in primer and on rego to make sure everything works before he finally gets it finished and it's just um, a 
amazing how these cars take over people's lives. Now that's what you call a mountain motor. And I really do, um, the, the finish on these graphics on this car was very, very good. Um, for people that have done a bit of that type of thing, it's um, difficult enough to get things straight and align and then to get it all flat and back cut through to get that nice flat look. It's um, a lot of effort. And then inside the door jams as well. Now this was at Motor X last year as an unveil car and I've seen it quite a few times and every time I see it I fall more than in love with it. The colour combo, the way it sits, the way it's finished, just an absolutely beautiful car. Modified, but it doesn't look modified. And then a classic red interior. You know, red, chrome and black, you can't go wrong. Now, if my memory serves me correctly, this um, was unveiled last year as well, so this would have qualified probably at Motor X last year. Beautiful straight body on this Mustang. Very subtle, it doesn't sort of jump out at you, but um, to be in this hall, it's um, got some very, very good details about it. Now, I first seen that I think at um, Showcars Melbourne again, and unfortunately for some reason I didn't get a lot of footage of it, so I haven't been able to bring you that, but I've made sure that I did this time. Black on black on black. But I love that low hat on the, uh, the injection. And then everywhere you look, there's modifications and changes, but the car still has that classic Monaro feel and look about it. And as with the Corvette next door to it, we've got the red interior, very tastefully done. I like the lights on the floor, the digital dash, all the stitched carpets. It's almost like a hot rod put into a, you know, a 60 model car. It's almost got a, a boot made to look like the, the front interior with the, the heel mat in the middle there. Just love everything about it. Awesome paint and panel. So King Cad. So another one that qualified from Melbourne and the way it works is the top cars at particular events around the country, if they the sort of winners at that or the leaders at that event, then they're asked if they would, are interested in coming to Superstars because there's no good giving them a qualifier if they don't come. So King Cat had changed hands and the new owner had it at that event and obviously chose to bring it along and it was good to see it back out and all cleaned up and, and presented. So even though it's quite an older car, um, you know, it was brought out and qualified and turned up at the event, which was awesome to see. Now 
Now this is going to round it out and this is a car that I've specifically made at the end because I really love this car. The, the, the fit and finish and detail and the styling on this car was superb and I think it just shows it doesn't matter what you love you can build the car the style of car that you want um, and end up in an event like Superstars and I did talk to the owner about it and I really did like it and if someone said to me what was your pick I would say go and have a look at this because everything about it I liked um, whether you like the car or not doesn't matter the finish the, the everything about it I just loved it so I'm going to finish up on that one and I thank you very much for joining us um, once again and we'll bring you some more in the, in the coming weeks from MotorX including the muscle cars and the traders and it was such a privilege um, to be involved in another show of this calibre after 47 years of doing it. I still learn something every time and it's good to catch up with all the people that we follow around the circuit. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you another time on another show. Okay, hold them up and smile. And while they're doing that, give them another round of applause so they feel as though they should be getting an amazing photo taken, and they absolutely are. So, from our Super 6 comes our Grandmaster for Maguire's MotorX. And of course, um, we are simply gonna say, it is heavy, isn't it, Owen? I might string this out. I'm not going to because pretty much everyone uh, will have realised by now um, an incredible build, a wonderful event this morning to unveil it, wonderful conversations. Please make plenty of noise for our Grandmaster for uh, Motor X21. It is entry number 304, Daniel Walton with the XY. Alright, give him a proper round of applause everyone here, that's incredible.